totally different pipe tobaccos. Old Briar. Dill's Best. Model. And Tweed present... Martin Kane, Private Eye. Starring William Gargan. Recess is over. Court is in order. The ladies and gentlemen of the jury will please settle down. Counsel for the defense may continue his examination of the witness, Thomas Randall. Now, Mr. Randall, we come to the crux of the examination. Harry Wright has been serving time in the penitentiary for a crime of which he insists he is innocent. Do you now admit that you perpetrated that crime? Yes, I do. I held up Salvatore's grocery two years ago. Did you have an accomplice? Yes, I did. Was Harry Wright that accomplice? No, he wasn't. I never saw that guy before in my life. Who was that accomplice? I refuse to answer. If Your Honor, please. Answer the question. Judge, I ain't gonna. What's the use getting other people in trouble? You realize you're subject to contempt for refusal to answer a question when so directed by the court? Judge, the troubles I got, what's contempt of court? Your Honor, in view of the circumstances, I'll withdraw the question. Proceed. That's all, Your Honor. Your witness, Mr. District Attorney. I was the prosecuting attorney when you were being tried for a gang murder nine months ago. Is that correct, Mr. Randall? That's right. When did you come to the humane decision to help this poor, innocent man, this Harry Wright? Last week. And where did you come to this decision, Mr. Randall? In the death house at Sing Sing Arsenic, New York. In other words, you have been sentenced to be executed in the electric chair two weeks from today. Is that right? That's right. And now, Mr. Randall, why did you come to this decision? What prompted you, a hoodlum and a convicted murderer, to suddenly come to the aid and assistance of one of your fellow men? Well, at first I didn't want to get mixed up in it. I didn't want to take that rap if I could avoid it. Then when I got caught up with, on this other thing, and my appeal failed and I was going to get the chair anyway, I figured I might as well clear the guy. That was your only reason? There was one other reason. And what was that, Mr. Randall? This! <laughs> I promised I'd get him and I got him. And what are you going to do about it, any of you? I'm going to fly anyway. <laughs> I can't die twice, can I? I can't die twice. Where'd you get the gun, Randall? Who gave you the gun? He did. Defense counsel, Jeffrey O'Donnell. I promised I wouldn't talk. But why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I? <laughs> Don't talk So it's uh, Mr. O'Donnell who's uh, asked me to investigate this case, but right now he's in the pokey. That's right. And you're John Blake. Uh, may I ask what your position is with Mr. O'Donnell? Well, I'm his investigator and man of all work. Say, are you a lawyer? No. When I got out of the Navy, I spent a couple of years in law school, and I've worked in various law offices, but I've never been admitted to the bar. I see. Well, you brought me up to date on what happened at this morning's trial. Now, uh, what about this Harry Wright? What's the story on him? Well... Two years ago, O'Donnell defended him. It was a murder charge growing out of a holdup. O'Donnell was convinced that Wright was not guilty. But the jury didn't believe O'Donnell. The circumstance was completely, it was completely circumstantial, the evidence. Mm -hmm. In the light of what we learned from Tom Randall today, mm -hmm. I say this is what happened. Two years ago, 
in Salvatore's grocery store. Nice day, nice, beautiful summer day. Hey, what you like today, Harry? Huh? Uh, I want some olive oil, Mr. Salvatore, and uh, a bottle of wine vinegar. Mama, you get the vinegar, me, I'm gonna get the oil, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is a stick up. Don't turn around or I'll shoot. Keep your hands up. High. All right, tap that tail. <laughs> I told you not to turn around, you miserable... Okay, let's get out of here. Hey, Dominic, I cut this fellow hot foot in an idea of place of business. Ran right into me. Hey, what's going on here? That was the gist of the evidence. The cross flag tattoo on his arm, which Dominic Salvatore was able to identify, and the fact that he ran. Well, uh, why did he run if he said he wasn't guilty? Well, I'll give you his story, Mr. Kane. He says the minute he saw those two hold up men, he ducked down behind a barrel and stayed there till he, till he heard the shots. Mm -hmm. Says he couldn't tell what anybody looked like, didn't have a chance to see. Then after he heard the shots, he looked out, saw it was clear, and ran. Same question. Why did he run? Well, he'd been pretty wild. He spent a couple of terms in the reformatory. He was afraid of trouble, got panicky, ran right into the arms of a cop. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's his story. And O'Donnell believed him? Yes. But the jury didn't? That's right. Were you working for O'Donnell at the time? No, no, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. What happened at uh, Wright's trial? Well, as you said, the jury didn't believe him. Mm -hmm. But because of the caliber of the evidence, there was a recommendation for mercy. He got uh, 20 to life. That tattoo wouldn't be enough. As I recall, during the war, that cross flags tattoo, uh, they were pretty common. Well, that's what O'Donnell said, Mr. Kane. But the tattoo, coupled with the incriminating fact that Wright had fled from the scene of the crime, plus his record, I did it. Uh-huh. And along comes Randall, a convicted murderer, to clear the guy, huh? Well, right now, that's up in the air, too. There's some question whether Randall didn't use that set of facts as a plan to get out of jail and make good his boast of killing the DA, who had prosecuted him for that recent gang murder. You see, now who brought uh, Randall down from Sing Sing? Well, the DA's man, Mr. Kennedy, and uh, a New York City detective, Bob Murphy. Bob Murphy, know him very well. By the way, O'Donnell uh, uh, defended uh, Randall, didn't he? Yes, uh, he was appointed by the court. He did the best he could, but Randall was as guilty as they come. All right, Mr. Blake, will you tell Mr. O'Donnell that I'll be over to see him just as soon as possible? Uh, sure will. Right. I, I admit the gun was mine, but that doesn't mean I... Well, why should I? What possible motive could I have? We've got some ideas of our own about that motive angle, Mr. O'Donnell. You and your wife are estranged. And there are rumors around town that Harrison was pretty sweet on her. Oh, that's ridiculous. Now, Mr. O'Donnell, as an attorney, you must admit that in the motivation of murder, jealousy has always played a tremendous part. So far, it's only a rumor, but we're running it down, O'Donnell. What's this about jealousy, gentlemen? Oh, it's Kane. Better ask your client, Kane. He's all yours. Come on, Sergeant. Yes, sir. A good day. Hello, Mr. O'Donnell. What were they talking about? Oh, I won't dignify it with discussion, Mr. Mm -hmm. Kane. I'm, I'm very glad you could come. The reason I sent Blake down... Yes, I know. You couldn't get out. There's no bail for first-degree murder. Exactly. Mr. O'Donnell, I'm going to ask you a very straightforward question, and I, as you lawyers say, I'd like a straight answer, yes or no. Shoot. Did you or did you not, were you mixed up in this mess? I was not, Mr. Kane. You weren't. Then how come that Randall put the finger on you? Well, I've had time to think about that, Mr. Kane. You see, he wasn't exactly my client. He had no lawyer, so I was assigned by the court. Yes, Mr. Blake told me. Yes, I... I he wasn't very happy with my defense. I, I did the best I could under the mm -hmm. circumstances. I'd say that his, his twisted mind had figured out a method to kill Harrison and implicate me, and thus at the same time get, get even with both of us. Maybe. Maybe that's it. Mr. Kane, the thing I want you to investigate the most thoroughly is the business with the gun. It was your gun, wasn't it? Well, there's no question about it, but it was locked in my desk door. Who has keys to your desk? Well, I have, Blake and my secretary, but you're missing the point, Mr. Kane. That drawer was broken into. 
Do the police know this? Oh, sure they do, but they're too busy with motives, with rumors of jealousy. All right, Mr. O'Donnell. I'll be in touch with you. There's nowhere he could have stacked that gum. I agree with you, Mr. Murphy. I know he didn't have it on him. I can swear to that. So can I, old boy. That guy was handcuffed to me all the way down from arsoning. I can testify to that, too. I was on the other side of him all the way. Yeah, but how'd he get the gun? Uh, hiya, Marty. Hi, Bob. Good. Martin Hi. Kane, Mr. Kennedy, the DA's assistant. How do you do, Mr. Kennedy? Well, how did he get the gun? I beg your pardon. Oh, I just came in on the tail end of the conversation. What is your theory as to how he got the gun? It was passed to him. No question about that. Yes, yes, but uh, by whom? Anybody could have passed it him. Kennedy here, or Blake, or Harry Wright, or Harry Wright's sister, or O'Donnell himself. Yeah, but O'Donnell says that that gun was locked in his desk drawer and that somebody broke into it. Either one of you ever been in O'Donnell's office? Not me. No, I was there this morning, just prior to the trial. Oh, uh, notice anything out of the way? Not a thing. You ever been there, Mr. Kane? No, Mr. Kennedy, but I'm... I'm going there right after I see Captain Leonard. Bye, Marty. Wow. This one really is a humdinger, isn't it? A criminal threatens to get the DA who prosecuted him, and he really gets him. Yeah, he got him. But he had a lot of help, though. From whom? From O'Donnell. That's from whom. But why? Why should Jeffrey O'Donnell be mixed up in a conspiracy to get uh, Harrison? Well, we know for a fact that Harrison was squiring O'Donnell's wife about the town. So what? O'Donnell and his wife were separated, weren't they? <laughs> the convolutions of the human mind are devious, Happy. Mm. Jealousy is a potent factor in the perpetration of crime. Oh, mm. all hail the master sleuth. Well, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Any uh, new developments, master sleuth? Not for me. Uh, anything new, fellas? Well... We, we, it's no longer rumor, Mr. Kane. We know for a fact that Harrison and Mrs. O'Donnell were, uh, very friendly. Well, that doesn't make O'Donnell a murderer, does it? No, it doesn't make him a murderer. However, we've got motive. We've got the fact that it was his gun. And we've got the testimony of Randall that O'Donnell slipped the gun to him. Now, what more do we need? Faith. O'Donnell's a good man. He's an honest lawyer. Has been all his life, and you know it. Could be. Where are you going? I'm going to go to O'Donnell's office. Oh. Um, you have to see Judge Peters in this chambers, Captain. I know that. However, we're still a little early. Let's have a few minutes' conversation with O'Donnell in the meantime. <laughs> Whatever you say, Captain. So long, Happy. So see you, Happy. Come on, sir. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, Count of Copenhagen. Right you are, sir. Copenhagen. It's the best made, you know. I know. We use it at the factory all the time. Shall I open it, sir? Yeah. There you are, sir. Mmm, that really is fresh. You bet it is. Anything else? Uh, have you got some really mild smoking tobacco? You bet I have. Just the one for you, sir. Dill's best. Flavor cut for extra mildness and cool smoking. Did you say flavor cut? That's right. That means that every particle of Dill's best is cut to just the right size for perfect smoking. Let me show you something here. See this here? See, that tobacco is cut to just the right size. Mm. That's why it burns longer and slower. And that's why Dill's Best is extra mild and cool smoking. Sounds pretty good. How much? Just 15 cents, and that'll be 15 for the Copenhagen. Out of a half. I'll just check there. Thank you very much. Come again, huh? I will. Bye-bye. <laughs> that's it, Mr. Kane. No question, but that that drawer was uh, broken into. When did you first notice it? Well, this afternoon, after Randall accused O'Donnell. Uh -huh. That desk drawer was all right yesterday. Anybody in here this morning? No. Kennedy says he was. Oh, yes, but that's Kennedy, the DA's man. What was the purpose of his visit? Well, he got here before court opened. There were some aspects of procedure to be discussed with O'Donnell. I see. Was he in here alone, even for a minute? Well, as a matter of fact, he was. Uh, we had a client, and O'Donnell and I went to the ante room to talk with... Oh, Mr. Kane. You can't think that Kennedy had anything to do with this? I'm not thinking now, Mr. Blake. I'm just getting together facts. Uh, anyone else have any occasion to come in here thereafter? No. We had that Harry Wright hearing in court this morning. It wasn't until after that that they discovered this drawer. Uh, I know Jeff O'Donnell as well as any man in the world. He had absolutely nothing to do with the murder of District Attorney Harrison. 
I had absolutely nothing to do with the murder of District Attorney Harrison. Is that clear? Yeah, it sounds perfectly clear, Mr. O'Donnell. But don't forget, we are police officers, and we're no longer dealing with rumors. We know for a fact that Harrison was going to get married just as soon as your divorce from your wife became final. My wife had every reason on earth to do just as she pleased. But the facts, sir, as a jury would hear them, disclose motive, weapon, opportunity, and the testimony of an accomplice. Now, you're a lawyer, Mr. O'Donnell. How does that sound? Well, it... It doesn't sound good. All right, then why don't you break down and talk? You're right square up against it, and you know it. Is that all, gentlemen? It's all for now. Then I'll thank you to permit me to return to the welcome privacy of my cell. Everybody to their own taste. Only I'd advise you to get used to it, Counselor. Because I've got a feeling that you and jail cells are going to be in close proximity for a long time to come. Where's that boss of yours? When a captain of homicide and a justice of the Court of General Sessions are in conference in the chambers of said justice, who are we to be critical of the passage of time? One thing about you college guys on the force, you're all alike. Now that has a significance, I presume? You see, it presumes like this. When one little word can take the place of 12, you guys use the 12 words anyway. <laughs> no. Well, as of now, you are the fall guy. He was supposed to bring Randall in. What you were I, in charge. What was I supposed to do when I was in court, Captain? Sit in his lap? Well, something better break in this case pretty soon. Because if it doesn't, you are going to be right back in uniform, carrying a nightstick, pounding a beat up near Van Cortland Park. Oh, where's Martin Kane? Where's good old Martin Kane? Dr. Brett, you, you say that you're a plastic surgeon? Does right. Uh, may I see a sample of your work? That is, if it's all right with you. Of course, Mr. Kane. Hmm? This is all before and after. Hmm. The page on the left is the original features. And on the right, the same features after the operation. Do you, you always take pictures of your patients before and after operations? Usually, yeah, but not always. Uh, doctor, is that all you specialize in? Is just nose jobs? Oh, of course not, Mr. Kane. My work entails every part of the human body. Doctor, there's a couple of questions I want to ask you, and uh, you'll have to think back quite some time. By the way, Doc, where it was. Hey, you're hurt. Oh, I was lucky. It just crazed the flesh. Would you get me the antiseptic and bandages from the cabinet, please? I'm going to get you out of here, Doc. I'm going to put you in a hotel. If you stay here, you'll be in danger. We can talk there. And believe me, Doc, you've got a lot of talking to do. Too bad. Everything she's going to go crazy in the court today. People shoot the people. You know, I hope, Mr. Salvatore, that I never blamed you. Oh, sure, I know. You're good a girl. Your brothers are wild, but Harry's not a bad in the heart. Two years ago in the court, I tell her just what I am see. I'm not to blame on nobody. I don't know anything. Uh, Mama, she's been dead a long time now. Two long years. I'm an old man. I miss the good wife. But I am never believe Harry's a kill, a good, a sweet lady. He didn't, Mr. Salvatore. I don't care how long it takes to prove it, but my brother is not a murderer. I hope you're right. I am really hope so. Oh, Miss Sally Wright? Yes? I was told I'd find you here. I'm Martin Kane. Oh, yes, Mr. Kane. I called your office. If there's anything I can do. Oh, yes, there is. Do you, do you know a doctor by the name of uh, Ralph Britt? No. Well, he's at the Hotel Barton, Suite 525. Will you go there now and follow his instructions implicitly? My brother. Do you think it will help my brother, Mr. Kane? I think it will. Now, hurry along, will you? Hey, a 
it goes with Sergeant Ross. When the suspect is a famous criminal lawyer, how do you expect it to go? <laughs> Let me have a pouch of Old Briar. Right you are, Sergeant. Old Briar, the master mixture of rare flavor and aroma. The rarest of them all, Happy. You bet it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, not going so good, huh, Captain? No, this one's a headache, Happy. That fellow O'Donnell is a pretty shrewd article. Well, you sure he's your baby? You're never sure in a case like this. They're trying to make him believe that he's our baby, so he'll break down and talk. But just between ourselves, Happy, this case has got more holes in it than a sieve. Hello, hello, hello. Hey. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Uh-oh. Anytime Martin Kane breezes in like that, all chipper, something is cooking. Uh -huh. is, is there something, Mr. Kane? Uh, why, cooking? Why, sure enough, partner. But look, uh, I wonder if you uh, or we could get Judge Peters to uh, open court today. That is, with all the parties concerned. Today? Yeah. Well, I suppose it might be possible. That is, if it got anything to do with yesterday's shooting. It has. I'll tell you about it on the way. Come oh, on. Come along, sir. Come on, Hap. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, what you Hi, Sammy. How is it? Hello, Hap. All right, thanks. Uh, let me have a pouch of model. Right you are, Sammy. Model, the finest 10 cents worth of the tobacco you'll ever smoke. Did you say 10 cents? Yes, I said 10 cents. And still 10 cents, by the way, and plenty miles. Well, you don't have to tell me that. Thanks a lot, Hap. Thank you Hap. very much. Come again. Room will come to order. I have convened this court at the behest of Mr. Martin Kane. The circumstances are unusual, to say the least. The matter before us is a public hearing rather than a trial. We shall therefore waive all the regular rules of procedure. And now, Mr. Kane. May it please the court, I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I am quite aware of that, Mr. Kane. I, however, I think I've uncovered sufficient evidence to show that Harry Wright is a victim of a miscarriage of justice. And I think I'll be able to point out the murder of District Attorney Harris. Strictly speaking, the murderer is Thomas Randall, already convicted of one murder. Yes, but the man who supplied him with the gun... Yes, in pari delicti, just as much a murderer as the man who pulled the trigger. In that case, in front of this bar of justice, I accuse John Blake. Please proceed, Mr. Kane. O'Donnell is a shrewd criminal lawyer. If he was going to get mixed up in a murder, he certainly wouldn't permit his gun to be used. In my book, that ruled him out. We don't care about your book, Mr. Kane. We're interested in the facts exclusively. Well, who could have passed the gun to Rand? Wright? He wanted to get out of jail. Sally Wright? She's heart and soul for her brother. That left Kennedy of the district attorney's office and Blake of the defense. I concentrated on those two, investigated them both thoroughly. Please make your point, Mr. Kane. Your Honor... Would you call Dr. Ralph Britt to the stand? Dr. Britt in the courtroom. Please take the stand, doctor. In the circumstances, I won't swear you. All right, Mr. Kane. Dr. Britt, you're a plastic surgeon. Dr. Rand. Some time ago, you operated on a man by the name of John Brown. I did. What did you do to him? I removed a tattoo from his forearm. Do you recognize the man known as John Brown? I do. It is Dot Man. The one referred to as John Blake. That's a lie! Doctor, do you take pictures of your operations? I do. Did you take a picture of this man's arm? I did. He never took a picture of my arm. Wrong again, Blake. He took it while you were under the anesthetic. Do you have that picture with you, uh, Doctor? I do, good idea. Would you show it to the judge, please? Yes, yes, that's an eater for sure. You want to look at it, Mr. Blake? Can't look at it? Go ahead. All right, all right, let's get it over with. I'll tell you about it. Step down. Take your stand, Mr. Blake. I've been wanting to get this off my mind for some time. Ten years ago, when I went into the Navy, a lot of the fellas had tattoos like that made. Like Harry Wright's? Yes, it was exactly the same. When I got out of the Navy, I went to law school nights. And I worked for a lawyer during the day. It was through him that I met Tom Randall. He was nothing then. He was a small-time hoodlum. He propositioned me for some easy money, and I fell for it. He and I held up Salvatore's grocery. He... Please proceed. He shot that woman in cold blood. Killed her. And the wrong man was arrested for being mixed up in it. I was afraid to say anything. 
All right, all right. Now continue with your story. Randall had boasted that he was going to kill the DA. And last month, he finally figured out how. He called O'Donnell, and he told him that he could clear Harry Wright. And he asked him to send me up to discuss it. And you went up to Washington. That's right. When I got there, he told me the plan. I was to pass him the gun. When I objected, he threatened to expose my part in the Salvatore holdup. Well, whose idea was it to use Mr. O'Donnell's gun? Well, yes, he said that way he could kill two birds with one stone. I see. And I take it that you broke open that desk drawer, despite the fact that you had a key, to divert suspicion from yourself. That's right. And I want to tell you something else, too. When I got home yesterday, I realized my room had been searched. Dr. Britt's card was missing. So I heard to the doctor's office. I heard him talking to Kane, and I got panicky, and I, I took a shot at him. I missed. I'm glad I missed. <laughs> that uh, it was the legislature going to pass a bill to compensate Harry Wright. But, uh, Marty, I understand that there was more to the part played by Dr. Britt than appears on the surface. Oh, he, he cooperated in a little ruse, and it worked. A ruse? Yeah, he uh, sort of a convincer. This picture of the tattooed arm. I don't get it. Well, you see, uh, Blake was telling the truth when he said the doctor didn't take a picture of his arm. Yeah, but the doctor said that he uh, took uh, the picture of Blake when he was under the ether. Oh, no. The doctor's a very ethical man. He wouldn't take a picture unless he asked his patient first. All right, so I'll bite. Whose picture is it? Well, this is the, uh, this is the tattoo that's on Harry Wright's arm. This is Harry Wright's picture. You see? So, uh, you better take this, darling. Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. You see, Mr. Kane sent me to see Dr. Britt. And then Dr. Britt sent me to his personal photographer. Oh. And he took, we went to the jail together and he took a picture of my brother's arm. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, there it is. Now, hang it up in your trophy room and hang it very carefully. Would um, you care to come and help me, Mr. Kane? Well, it'd be a pleasure. Have you got a nail and a couple of hammers? I'll try. Or Good a night, couple of hammers and a nail? <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks. See you next week. And friends, if you can spare a dollar to help the disabled American veterans who risk their lives for you, send your contribution to the DAV, Box 100, New York 8, New York. Thank you. Martin Kane, Private Eye, has been brought to you by the makers of those four distinctively different pipe tobaccos. Old Briar, the master mixture of rare flavor and aroma. Hill's best flavor cut for extra mildness and cool smoking. Models so high in quality, so low in price. And Tweed, the shaggy rough cut tobacco. One of the four, just right for your tobacco taste. <laughs> William Gargan also appears weekly in the other exciting series of Martin Kane, Private Eye, on radio over another network. Check your local newspaper for time and station. NBC Television. Mm -hmm.